Okay, in this video I'm just going to show you a quick, sort of a quick start of how to use the um, Slink uh, female body kit um, that you can get that I created for Shadeen to give out um, to my Star users. I can't distribute it myself, so don't ask me, because uh, these are Shadeen's uh, mesh bodies, and I don't have the right to distribute them nilly-willy. It's up to her to... She, it, it's Shadeen's Slink's privilege to decide who gets the, the, her developer kits and who doesn't. Uh, she has her own standards, and you have to meet those standards. Um, so just to warn you that just because you have Myostar does not mean you automatically are going to be able to get these files um, from Slink. Uh, you'll have to go to her, her uh, find out from her what her requirements are. Okay, anyway, for those who do have it, um, I'm going to go over real quick things you need to know. Okay, so when you first open up the file, it's going to look like this. It's not going to have any skin textures on it or anything. They're there. It's to set it. For some reason, it opens up like this. I had to make this with my very old version of Maya to make sure that even old versions of Maya can, <coughs> can open it up. So all you have to do is hit the number six on your keyboard, and that gets the textures. So there's, they're there. You just have to, to get them. Okay. So over here in the in the channel box, you can see we have the original shape, the skirt for the original shape, the hourglass, uh, skirt for the hourglass, slink hands, and then we have um, oh, feet and feet and uh, slink hands. So you don't have to have the hands and the feet there. You don't even have to have the the head shown, the default head shown. But I leave it on there just because it looks weird without it. <laughs> okay, so. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to import your OBJ or your file uh, for the clothes that you need for the slink body. And so I'm going to import an OBJ of a same mesh top you saw in my other videos. Okay. Okay. So I got my top in. It's horrible. I know. Look at the arms. They're they're just they're just not. This is not good edge for. <laughs> like I said, this is just made for testing and for demonstrating. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to um, export. You need to set the the. Um, you need to start the female avatar appearance editor, and you need to go over to sizes, <coughs> and you need to click mesh default. You could click Mesh Default here too, but I usually just do it in sizes because there's the Bind Pose button is right there. So you do Mesh Default. The very next thing you need to do is you need to set the slink, I mean the, the apparent sliders to the appropriate sliders because you have to have, you have to rig to the same slider settings as the slink bodies were, uh, were rigged to in the first place. <coughs> and so Okay, so here are the, I'm going to bring over this file. So here are the settings. Um, these first ones are what they are in, in Maya Star that you need to set. And the ones over here are what Avastar has set um, for the, in Avastar. Some of them are going to be identical. Some of them are going to be a little bit different. That's just because of uh, Avastar and Maya Star working different ways. And sometimes there's rounding, um, you know, they round up differently um, or round down differently. Or I might have calculated the beginning position to be slightly different than Avastar. Um, uh, sometimes I pick the whole number instead of a, a fraction to be the, the beginning point. Um, so it could be that I have, you know, remember I made these sliders like well over two years ago so <laughs> I don't remember exactly how I set them up. So there's bound to be some differences between Avastar slider settings and Maya Star slider settings. Um, so anyway, so body thickness. You want 24. So you come over here to body and of course Maya's giving me that old I'm not going to change. There we go. Now it did. Okay. 
sometimes it my hangs up like that on me. I don't know why. I think it's because of my my uh, Wacom uh, tablet, pen tablet. Okay, so for the body thickness, you need to set it to 24. So what you do is you just come in here and you punch in 24, and you can either hit enter or you can hit apply slider. Now default puts it back to 32. Now 32 may not be the mesh default. These numbers here represent the second life um, default shape, not the mesh default shape. See, so if we go like that, these now have all the slider settings for um, the mesh for the second life default shape. That's not, um, yeah, because like if we go to torso down to arm length, see that's the default is 80. So if we go default. You know, that's, that's 80. That's obviously much longer than the mesh default. So if you were to apply all, it would basically, because these have all the default settings, would go to the second life default, except for the, um, the body thickness. It would apply the body thickness. Reset all, um, resets it all, reset all, and I saw default shape. <coughs> Pretty much do the same thing. But anyway, we want the mesh default. So we don't want the SL shape, we want the mesh default. Okay, so for body thickness, we want 24. Um, so you click 24. Actually, let me go to default and go into the x-ray. And go in here to uh, wire frequency. Shape. And now let me select the mesh body, just so you can see it a little bit easier. Okay, so when I go to the body thickness, you can see it, it changes. It's a little bit thinner uh, than the mesh default. Okay, so that's, actually the arms don't get thinner. The, the, this is the body thickness changes from 32 to 24. Okay, uh, let's see, let's see. The next one is body fat 5. So you just come in here and you put body fat 5 and you hit you can just hit enter and then we're going to come down here to the torso settings so we go torso 31 that happens to be the same on both we go torso settings now this is going to make the biggest difference 31 and you hit enter there we go okay and now this mesh top is meant to have a little bit of a gap between it's not supposed to be super super tight Okay, and now we need to do neck thickness 65, 65, oh, I'm sorry, that's neck, neck length. <laughs> uh, where's neck thickness? There we go, 65. Okay, and then we need uh, shoulders 37, uh, arm length 52, arm length. Uh, leg muscles 40 set, 45 and butt size 31. So leg muscles 45 and butt size 31. Okay. So these are the settings. Uh, Shadeen probably will have either told you these settings or um, Given you a, a text, a small text, txt file, text file, with these settings. I left off the Avastar equivalent because these are the ones that you really need to know. Um, now, once you have these slider settings, and what you want to do is come in here to My Star, and then you want to go to Skin Weight Tools, Custom Bind Pose, Create Bind Pose. Now, this is the Bind Pose. Now, if you were to click the Bind Pose button, nothing would happen. This is the mesh default, and now with the bind pose, we'll put us all back to the same settings we had before. So that's what we started off with, and this is what we're ending up with. That's the bind pose, because we, we changed the slider settings, and uh, we went to skin weight tools, and custom bind pose, create bind pose. I believe you can also do it under animations, 
custom bind pose is create bind pose. Same exact thing, I just put it in two different places <coughs> in the menus. Okay, so now that we have a bind pose, what you can do is you can um, open up the outliner. Okay, and you can select the end pelvis bone. And you can then come over here and move your mouse. So as long as it's not on bone, as long as it's not on your mesh, hold down your right mouse button and select hierarchy. That selects all the bones in the skeleton. And then you can very carefully hold down the shift key and select your mesh clothing. Or you could have selected in here in the outliner. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick smooth bind. And these are the set sliding set. These are the, the settings. I recommend one well, you should always use selective joints. Closest distance is good. You can try other bind methods if you want. That's fine to, to experiment with. Um, classic linear. Um, I always use classic linear, although there's difference. Um, you can play with these different ones if you really want, but we're going to be copying the weights anyway. So it doesn't matter what you use here. Um, I always use interactive. Uh, normalized weights interactive that allows you as I think believe that's allows you to when you're paint weighting the the vertices will actually move while you're paint weighting um, so that you can actually see what you're doing uh, weight distribution uh, I just use distance as the default do not do not ever use allow multiple bind poses because that messes up a lot of those mill scripts that run my start so don't ever use them not allow multiple bind poses um, if you have used multiple bind poses in the past, go to your outliner, uh, change this to turn off DAGs, objects only display, turn this off. The DAGs, objects only. And then come in here and type in bind, capital P, and then lowercase OSE, and then asterisk, which is just shift, pressing the number 8 key on the keyboard, and hit enter. If there were more than one bind pose in there, you can then just select those bind poses and delete them. Um, you could even delete all of them and then create your custom bind pose. Now, custom, when you create a custom bind pose, it's looking for bind pose one, I believe. So if we delete this and go to Maya Star, custom bind poses. Yep, see, it's looking for bind pose one. But since you deleted it, it goes, ah, what happened? I'm trying to overwrite bind pose one, but it's gone. What's going on? So if this was like say bind pose seven, you know, and you try to do it, you'd get the same error because it's looking for bind pose one. So all you have to do is double click, click again with your mouse to get the cursor there, put in one and hit enter. And now when you go to uh, create bind pose, it will not it will create it and not give you an error okay so you got your bind pose oh um so now we have our, our mesh rigged and it's just a default rig oh, no, we hadn't yet Duh. I could I didn't click that so okay so let's do this again so and pelvis hold down the right mouse pin button uh, drag your mouse down, release on select hierarchy to select all the bones in the skeleton at once. Hold down your shift key and very carefully click on your, your mesh. Um, and then go, you know, Maya Star, smooth bind, Maya Star, smooth bind skin. And then click using these. Um, oh, so let's go through the rest of the, the thing. Turn off, make sure max and I'll make sure to allow multiple bind poses are off. Uh, you want max influences set to four. That's the absolute max. What max influences mean is that's the maximum number of bones any single vertice will be rigged to. Doesn't mean it will be rigged to four bones. It just means that if there's enough bones close to that vertice um, within this drop-off rate, it will rig to those four bones. Um, but if it's one way out here on the end, it might only rig to one bone um, if there were no other bones near it uh, to, to a particular vertice. Okay, so that's what that means. Um, and I know Shadeen, I'm almost 100% sure she rigged to 
when she did it, she did a maximum influence of four. So you want to make sure you rig to the same amount of maximum influences. Or, because I don't know what would happen if you try to copy weights from a higher, a lower, a higher maximum influence to a lower maximum influence. So anyway, just use four. Um, okay. I turn off maintain max influences. You can leave it on, but I turn it off because it makes weight painting easier. Uh, what maintains max influences means is it's going to maintain if a vertice when you did the initial smooth bind was rigged to four bones and you go to weight paint it or you copy the weights over and you go to weight paint it and that and a particular vertice is rigged to four bones. You know, if say you want to get rid of all say you're doing a button. This is a great example of buttons. Buttons, the whole button should be have the same exact weights. And say the button just happened to be right over a bone, say the chest bone. You know, you had a button down the middle of your blouse, and there just happened to be the chest bone, which I believe is right around here. Oh, there it is. It's right there. That you, you had a button right here, and you wanted to rig this button 100% to the chest bone. Um, you know, and so you're wanting to get rid of these other influences, these other three bones influences. Well, if you have maintain max influence, set these those other three bones will never go down to zero they'll get close and you might get to like 99 percent influence on the chest bone and then the other three bones might have like uh, what's one percent divided by three you know 0.3333 uh, uh, weight on a particular bone but you'll never get down to you'll never be able to get rid of those influences of those other bones so I always have turn off max influences. It really, I've never found any particular reason for it um, to actually even use it. So just turn it off, do your favor. You can play around with your drop off rate. Drop off rate doesn't really matter because we're going to be talking weights anyway. You can turn on, well, you don't want to turn off and turn off this too. Remove unused influences right now because you want, you want the mesh that you're smooth buying has to have all the same bones rigged as your the thing you're going to copy it from. It's okay for your mesh clothing to have more bones, you know, all the bones that the thing you're going to be copying the weights from. You just want to make sure that your mesh clothing has all the same bones. So you can have all the same bones plus extra. And the easiest way to make sure you have all of the bones um, that you're copying weights from is to do your initial smooth bind to all of the bones in the skeleton. Okay, so um, let me do this again. Just selecting the mesh uh, and pelvis, selecting the hierarchy, and now you'll notice there are 159 objects. That's 159 bones. I keep saying this into a lot of videos. Um, just to get it, the point across, the maximum number of bones a single mesh can be rigged to is 110 bones. Okay, that's very important to remember. So we are rigging to 159 bones, but we are going to be getting rid of the extra bones in here in just a minute, another step. Okay, so we have all the 159 bones selected. I'm going to shift select my mesh clothing, and I'm going to uh, find skin. Like I said, you don't want this turned on because there might be bones that this needs to have copied, but is not quite close enough to um, to the the mesh that it wouldn't that that bone wouldn't be added to this mesh clothing, and we've got a problem. <laughs> so do yourself a favor, just turn this off. Um, okay. Um, so anyway, so we're going to say as far as copying skin weights. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to say find skin. Oh, and then we got an error because I probably. Oh, that's right. I made the, the mesh avatar move by, by doing this. Even though I put it put it back, it was still not quite in the in the bind pose. Okay, so we can do anything. We just go minus star, go to bind pose. And now we should be able to do it. Select the mesh pelvis, hold down the right mouse button, select hierarchy, hold down the shift. 
Thank you, Mesh Clothing, and it finds him. Ta-da! And now it's now it's ready. Okay. So now that we have it rigged, let me move this out of the way. Let's go to scrub, and now let's go out of X-ray mode. This is called scrubbing. You just move your mouse down to the the time slot, the time, uh, whatever the thing is called. These are the these are the frames. And uh, I know I it's just, the name of this just escaping me at the moment. At the moment, um, you can see as I hold down the left mouse button, I can scrub through this to see what the animation kind of looks like. You can see a lot of poke through here, a lot of poke through there. Shoulders don't look too bad, but you got a lot of poke through here, a lot of poke through back here. That's because we haven't copied the weights from. These are just the default weights, and I'll just put it back to one. I could have had it here. And just went minus star and go to bind pose. Doesn't matter. So I could have scrubbed back to there, or I can go um, go to bind pose. If you had gone to uh, animation poses and you want to see what she looks like when she female walks, and then stopped, you'll notice that number one is is not on here anymore. So just go minus star, go to bind pose. Okay. So now we're back to the bind pose. Now we're going to copy the skin weights. So first thing you want to do is you want to select the mesh, call it the mesh, uh, the mesh body. Now what you might want to do is you might want to come up here, and you might want to turn off select bones, so that you don't accidentally select on a bone, because bones have higher priority than mesh. So you might have accidentally clicked on uh, um, a bone by mistake. So if you're having trouble selecting the mesh and your mesh, turn this off. Uh, if you don't see this. You might have to just click on that to expand this so you can see it. And you can see there's other things that you can collapse and expand. So if you don't see these, it's just one of these that you have to click on, you know, in order to, to see them. Okay, and so this is for bones. This is mesh. Uh, I believe these are nerve curves. And it shows you curve objects. You just hold, hover over it, select handle objects. You know, so you can see what these others do, but that's the joints. You can see it kind of looks like the joint, the joint tool, or they kind of looks like joints. Anyway, <laughs> I tend to go into so much more detail. This is supposed to be a quick start. Okay, so we have our mesh selected. Hold down the shift key and select your mesh clothing. It's very important to do it in that order. You know, I could have came in here and selected the mesh there, and then hold down my control key. The control key, not the shift key and selected my mesh clothing. If I had held down the shift key, it would have selected everything in between. So I select, click on that, hold down the control key, and click on there. Now I have it selected in the proper order. And now you can go to Maya Star, Skin Weight Tools, and go over here to copy skin weights. If you're using anything newer than like 2010 and newer, or even 2009 probably and newer, and you see yours looks like this, um, I just use the default settings. So I click edit and you click reset settings. I just use the default settings and you can click copy. And it copies over very fast. Okay, now if we scrub through, we can see we don't have all this poke through. Now the butt was very tight and that's why we were getting more poke through. Okay, this is a great example <laughs> of a butt. No, um, this is a great example of this has much fewer geometry. So it doesn't have this really nice curve than the butt. That's why you're getting these poke throughs. If this had more geometry in here, you wouldn't have any poke through. But that's why we have poke through here. Not that the weights didn't copy over properly. It's because there's not enough geometry in here. Now you could definitely fix some of this with some weight painting a little bit so it didn't quite poke through so much. And of course you can always have the avatar alpha these this through this out. Now this is where you come into a problem with alphas. You don't want any poke through along the edges. Otherwise there won't otherwise you will see uh, if you're using an alpha underneath uh, to hide the avatar, you you can, you'll be able to see through the avatar. And I'm sure anybody who's been doing any sort of rigging probably knows that, but who knows, you guys might, some of you might be just starting out. 
learning how to do this. So you see, this does a lot of the work for you. You know, you're there. You know, you just might need to weight paint a little bit. You know, um, so, okay, so we got, and I'll show you how to do that real quick um, after I show you how to get rid of the excess bone. So let's get back to the bind pose. And we go to bind pose. And you see we have that. Um, this this poke through was the same way. I just didn't have enough geometry in that area. But we can fix we can fix that a couple of different ways. And I'll show you here in just a second um, to show you a quick couple of things. Okay, so first we need to get rid of these excess bones. Um, let's open up the script editor. You can open up the script editor. This is a shortcut right down here. Or you can open the script editor by going Windows, uh, Settings and Preferences, and uh, where's the script editor? I'm looking right through it. I always do it through the. There it is. It, I'm sorry. It's not in Settings and Preferences. It's in General Editors, Script Editor. I always use a shortcut down here to open it up. Okay, so I'm opening. I open it up. I'm going to right mouse. Put my cursor up here, hold down the right mouse button. I'm going to clear the history. And then in Maya Star, with my mesh coding selected, I'm going to go Maya Star for earlier versions of Maya skin cluster bone names. Now these are all, all 159 bones. And you want to get rid of a bunch of those. So, quick and easy way to do it is go over to animation, go to skin, with your mesh coding selected, just the just your mesh coding, just what you, you know, um, then go skin, edit smooth skin, remove unused influences. Boom, it's done. It removed 133 unused bones to get rid of it. Now if we clear history and go Maya Star for earlier versions of Maya, skin cluster bone names, you can see we are well underneath 110 bones. Uh, and you can see if you wanted to get a list of names of, say, Shadeen's um, body or his Greek too, you could kind of select the mesh body, go to, for earlier versions of Maya, skin cluster bone names, and these are all the bones her, her, um, rig is, rig, her mesh is rigged to. Um, there's probably some in here that she doesn't really need, like these spines. Um, so, but if you did want to rig to exactly the same bone she's using, or we can see, let's see what bones she could get rid of. Um, now, Blender might not be able to do this. This might be only a Maya, a Maya thing. Use unused influences and 26 bones. Got rid of 26 bones. That her mesh wasn't using, has zero weights on them. No vertice had any weights on it. That's what removed unused influences means. Um, so, you know, and yeah, I was right. It was the, the some of them were the um, thing. But let's just undo real quick. I'm going to control undo to get those bones back on for, for her body. So her body has all the original bones that it had on. Because I just want to show you that. Put down here for torso. Put down here, like say, breast size. That everything still works. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, those breasts make me laugh. Um, when they're that big. Uh, let's see. Do I have any more shading? X-ray. So you can see it's still, even though we've removed some bones that she's not using, it doesn't affect the thing. So that'll still work just fine. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, not mesh to fall. Although it actually doesn't matter at this point. And Maya's deciding to lock up with it for a second. So, so anyway, so we got these, these are the settings, and now 
sometimes you find it there. Well, if you're ever wondering, how am I switching back and forth between two programs like that? It's an, a very old, it's an old, it's an old timer's trick. <laughs> it's an old timer's trick. I remember when I was 19, 20, and I was just a young, a young lass roaming. For, I don't know where I was roaming. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, so, um, how you, anyway, it's an old time, uh, uh, it was for like Windows, the original Windows. Uh, you just hold down your Alt key and then you press the Tab key. And then you let go of the Tab key. Here, let me, and if you keep, if you hold down the Alt key and you keep hitting the Tab key, you can go through these different, different things. Like that's where we are. That's the second, and it will just keep going back and forth between the last two selected. Just Alt Tab, Alt Tab. I always hold down the Alt key first, and then hold just tap, hit the Tab button, and then let, once you let go of the Alt Alt key, it goes back. So you can flip back and forth between things really fast. Okay. Anyway, that's that's an that's an old timer's trick. Back in the day, <laughs> uh, Windows three point. Or something like that. I don't remember what it was. It was even before Windows had had a um, had a thing. It might even be pre Windows. I don't know. Yes, I actually worked on computers before there was Windows when it was just DOS, and um, so you can actually run a computer without Windows. It's amazing. Um, so anyway, um, without any sort of operating system, an operating system all it does is it makes it easier for you it's an interface it makes it easier for you to do things that you would otherwise have to know how to type in the code like it used to be to load a file you would have to go C colon um, I think it was backslash or just load call backslash oh, how was it? I can't remember now you used to have to actually type in the word load and then Type in the, the where the program was that you wanted to um, to load. So it might be load C colon um, uh, then whatever directory your your program was in, then the name of the directory, and then hit enter. Or it might be what was it C colon and you put in the, the the thing, and then you put no, I don't think you put in load. So it's been so long, I don't even remember. But you used to have to just, you would have to know these codes. To do it now, you just hit the start. Just come down here and you hit the start button, and you or you have a you have a you know a thing down here, an icon down here that you just click on. That's what Windows does, and I'm sure I'm, I'm wondering how many people didn't know that. That's what really all Windows is, and it and allows different programs to communicate with each other easier. So yeah, Windows is just really more of a way to make your computer easier to use. Um, and that Bill Gates is like the richest man in the world. I love. I think Bill Gates is a wonderful man myself. I think he's great. He had a bad reputation for a long time, and people just loved Steve Jobs. Turned out Steve Jobs was the a hole, <laughs> and and Bill Gates is the is the billionaire who actually gives millions away to charities and trying to save the earth and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, just turned out kind of be the opposite of what people thought for a long time. Anyway, um, let's see. So, uh, to, so that kind of, me and my ADD, that's, you get, that's, if you want to know what it's like having ADD, that's what it's like. You hear me go, my brain goes on these tangents all the, all the time. So, anyway, so we, we removed the skin cluster, are the extra bones. You can see that it still responds just fine, you know, um, to all the all the slider settings, you know, so everything is fine. Okay, so now um, say you want to export out. You don't even have to be in the bind pose to ex export out. Uh, so you got this. You we you gotten rid of all the excess bones out of it by doing remove unused influences. Now you can export out uh, your selection. And um, I was work I was trying some experiments with a tiny avatar. Um, and I'm just gonna, okay, so I might as well go over this real quick. 
I have a video that shows you how to all these settings. But if you're new and you not you don't feel like digging through my massive list, massive videos that are not very well organized, um, these are the settings you're going to want to use. Um, include options, uh, geometry. Uh, you can turn on triangulate if you want. I like interactive display mess. That's if you're actually going to use NURBS instead of polygons. Uh, this will allow you to export out, and it will convert your your NURB into a polygon during the export process. Even if it's rigged, you can rig you can rig NURBS. It's really awesome. Um, I know it works, but I don't know how well how much of an advantage that is. Okay, and then you come down to animation. You want to make sure animation is turned off, but before you turn off animation, you want to make sure that skins is selected and deform models that can or it can or I don't think it has to be deform models has to be selected, but skins definitely do. You can turn off blend shapes. Um, just make sure those two are, are set, um, and then turn off animations because you don't want to export out all these walk animations that I have. It'll make your file huge and it will take forever. It might take forever for it to export out. Um, turn off cameras. You don't need to export out cameras. You don't need to export out lights. Um, this is a real super important thing. Do not have it on automatic. I've had a number of customers who this makes it the export crash, um, you know, or freeze up. So turn off automatic and switch this to meters. Um, do yourself a favor and switch this to ziggy up. That way, you if you ever re res something on the ground, it won't be on its side. And switch this to meters so that if the avatar is tiny, like this avatar is tiny, it's a hundred times smaller than the, than the second life avatar. It'll come. Your mesh clothing will, if you decide to res it on the ground, will come in the appropriate size. Um, so do yourself a favor, do that. You can do it centimeters if you really want to, but I wouldn't just do meters. Save yourself a lot of headache. Um, so yep, you can have this set or not. If you get irritated by these warning messages all the time when you export, you just turn it off. If you're having a lot of errors, you might want to turn it back on and look at it. You can generate a, a log data or not. You'd have to go looking for it to open it up and see it. The, gener the generated log data will just give you the same warning messages in it, or although it may have input information when you don't have warning messages in it. Never really looked at it, never really needed to. Uh, here's another point where there's a place where you can have triangulate set. Don't know why it's in there two different places, but okay. <coughs> I leave it off. Um, I just have second life triangulate sometimes. It might go faster if you do turn on triangulate. It might upload the second life a bit faster. If it's already been triangulated and the, the limit upload window doesn't have to triangulate. <coughs> so that might make it faster. So you might want to turn that on. Uh, frame rate doesn't really matter. And this is the plugin I'm using is 2014. Uh, 0.1 release, I believe 2013 works just fine. There is a problem, I think, with either 2012 or 2011 um, that was not compatible with Second Life. I can't remember which one it is. Um, I, I can't remember which one it is. So, but this is the one I need. I know 2013 works just fine. I was using, a, I've used very old versions. I, I can't remember which, for anyway. So, anyway, this, these are the settings I'm using. Okay. So, um, yeah, and it's not that 2012 and older are bad. No, it's, I think it's 2012 or 2011 that that particular year, Collada plugin uh, was messed up. And if you have that particular uh, version of Maya and you're using that one, go to find the, the archives and see if you can't download load a newer version. Well, usually you can get a version within a year or two. So if you had that 2012 or 2011 and, and you're, just, you're using all the right settings and it won't upload, and you're just pulling your hair out, that's probably why. You can find the archives for the uh, Collada plugins, and uh, usually you can, a year or two newer, you can download and install that, and that will allow you to export out. Okay, so those are the settings. Um, and um, then you can just export out, and, and away you go. Okay, so weight painting. Here's a quick thing about weight painting, or, or not weight painting, well there's a couple, um, first I'm going to show you an easy way to adjust these poke through. 
very unpopular. It doesn't have anything to do with weight gaining. You don't have to worry about it. Let's turn it off. That's right. You can say I wanted to get rid of these. Just down the right mouse button. Go to your vertices. Auto select a couple of vertices. And then I can oops, just move them out. That's simple. Yeah, you can just move them until you don't have any help there. Oops. I hate it when I accidentally click the. And now it won't let me get rid of that. There it goes. Okay. So you can just move it until it's out. And you see that looks fine. Now I don't have any poke through there. So that's one super simple way if it's just a little bit of poke through. And I can do the same thing down here. If I really wanted to um, I could eliminate the poke through here. Now an apple would look just fine. And if I wanted to bring it up, you know, so you can adjust it that way. Okay, so let's say you do want to weight paint. Um, how do you weight paint? I'm just going to give you a real quick demonstration. I don't know if this will actually work or not. Um, let's say we're going to go to Oh, let's see. Go to Premium Pranks Editor. Let's go to Legs. What size? Okay, there's a good spot. See, there's some poke through right there. Let's say we want to get rid of um, You go to, you have your mesh selected. You go to My Star. And I haven't actually tried this, so this is the first time uh, Paint Skin Weights tool. Okay, and I'm going to turn off the skeleton because we don't need to see the skeleton. And um, let's see, it probably could increase the pelvis, so it's good that it's set there. We could probably increase the pelvis a little bit, so we want to go to add. And I'm going to use uh, a weight painting, I'm going to use my my brush. This is what Wacom's are great for. A very light touch will add just a little bit of weight, even though this is set to put a whole bunch of weight. I can just do a little tap. Whatever lightest tap. And you see I'm going over the, the vertice. Just the slightest tap. And I could even do that here. Slightest tap. To adjust this just a little bit. So, if you're going to do weight painting, buy yourself a Wacom pen tablet. That's a cheap one for like $99, uh, or go on Craigslist or buy a used one for $25. Bucks. It will save you so much time because weight painting really is painting. Okay, so now we did kind of did one side. Let's move it out a little bit there. And now we can scrub through, see what it looks like when she's moving. You know, and whoops, paint a little bit there. You know, so you could do this and get rid of all the poke through, but you're going to have to. Um, Now the vine pose, the weight painting, if you do this in vine pose position, 
No matter how much you weight paint, nothing's going to happen. It ain't going to move. These vertices are not going to move when you weight paint. They, they may move a bit when you have it. I don't even think it will move. Well, let's see what happens. We're in bind pose, right? We don't have any slider settings. The bind pose is the default setting. Uh, so if we try to weight paint now, and we try to add to the M pelvis, oh, let's move. Okay, we'll try to. Okay, it does. It does affect it a little bit here because the bones have been moved. Okay, so it did affect it there, but if we go to bind pose, try something else way. And we'll start on the finance tool. See? Nothing happens. They don't move because we're in the bind pose. Now if we move like that, we do get because the bones are actually moving. So they're going to be influencing with the bones influence mark. Um, but you saw it didn't actually change anything. So you never paint weight in the bind pose when you paint weight. Um, I'm going to undo. Control C, Control C, Control C. Now that those weights really got messed up. <laughs> Sometimes Control Z does not get you back to the way you really want it to be. Those weights are really messed up now. And I wonder what would happen if we... Okay, you know, I want to recopy the weights over and start start from scratch again. Uh, minus five. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Copy thinness. Yep. And then put it back. Okay, so, and, oh, my, my pen must have slipped. Oh, no, the reason this happened, okay, because we weren't in the bind pose, that's why these weights got messed up. So you always want to copy the skin weights from in the bind pose position. back to normal. Okay, so there we go. And everything's back to normal. So, and I always find myself, I find it easiest to paint, to paint weights when like slider settings are set to their maximum. So if I was going to paint weight the butt, I'd set it to maximum. Um, if I had to paint weight the breasts, you can paint weight at the minimum too, um, you know. Uh, but it's as long as you have slider settings on. It's just easier to see the poke through. Uh, let's see, torso. Where's the belly? Belly, 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 belly. We can paint weight the belly. We could um, uh, go to star and skin weights and there's probably a faster way of getting to that I'm so old school we didn't have it where you can select there and select an, a mesh so old school used to be old school before that was available oh, there's the belly so if we wanted to increase the belly we could increase the influence of the belly but just remember the more you paint weight away from her body the less it will change like her body. You know, small little changes like this aren't going to make that big deal. And this you probably would have hidden with an alpha anyway. So, you know, I'm just kind of going over this. Now this is adding. Um, I like adding a lot because that will use, you're adding. If you're using a mouse, you set this to a much lower setting so that you can just, I'll show you with the mouse, you just click, one click, see, one click one click. You know, you could even set it to much lower than that, so it might take you a couple of clicks to get there. Um, and you can always smooth, you know, 
Smooth is very powerful. You know, if you didn't like that deformation there, you know, you can make it a little bit smooth. I'm using just the, the mouse. Um, so anyway, uh, I never really got the hang of scale. I don't know why I just never really got a hang of it. I know the theory, but I just never. So I always either use add or replace. If you're trying to remove, um, you could do replace, and you could set this down to, like I said, do yourself a favor, get a Wacom tablet. You know, uh, to go replace, you put zero, and you can remove influence. See how it removed the influence of the bone? instead of just adding it. So if you added a little bit too much and you're like, oh shoot. You know, I'd also highly recommend going to oh, what used to be called Creative Crash and it has changed their name. Um, heightened something. Um, there are some really nice uh, weight painting, weight tools that you can, allows you to copy weights and mirror weights and, and all that to make it a lot easier than just simply weight painting. Um, I'll give you another quick tip. If you have a mesh clothing that is a lot more um, complex than mine, mine basically is a single layer. You know, it's a single layer. It's skin tight. It's easy to weight paint. It's easy to get to all the vertices while you're weight painting. Um, if you have a very, like, something with a lot of ruffles, a lot of nooks and crannies that are really difficult to weight paint, what you do is you create a simpler version a much simpler version without all those wrinkles, you know, um, you know, basically delete it and smooth it, smooth, delete those wrinkles, those, and smooth it so it's nice and smooth, but it still represents the basic shape of yours. Weight paint that, get it looking nice, and then copy the weights from it to your mesh clothing. Um, especially if you're doing like something that's double-sided, um, you don't ever want to paint, weight paint, double-sided stuff. Delete the inside. You know, if you have basically a simple dress and you have a lot of stuff that's double-sided on the inside for whatever reason, it's, although, if you really know what you're doing, you don't need, you don't need mesh clothing, like, for the, to go in much farther than here on the inside. Um, I'm giving a lot of detail and this is supposed to be a very quick, <laughs> a very quick and simple video that's turned into a 52-minute video. Oh my god. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's see. So I'm just going to show you. Oh, come on, I want that. I want that. Let me close that. I'm going to detach the skin. I'll just delete history. Delete history will detach the skin automatically. Okay. Now let me turn on back face combing. Maybe we'll see it much easier. Um, okay, so you see the inside of my dress, or the top, it only comes in a little bit. You know, so that if somebody were to look underneath, they wouldn't see the inside. Same thing with the collar, same thing with the, um, with the inside of the wrist. A lot of people uh, would even just simply um, uh, go to edge. Uh, and then they would just bring it in like that, so that it, it's, it's even less noticeable. They may even, you know, of course, the more you bring it in, you know, and you could even merge the vertices together, so it's just one vertice if you're really trying to save on on, uh, on vertices. So a lot of people do, all, all, all the really good designers that I know, they do this, so that you don't have to worry about somebody looking up your dress <laughs> and seeing your 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 alpha out, alpha out body. Um, they might see something else with a dress this short, but well, this isn't a dress. This is a mesh top, just a long mesh top. It's not a dress. Um, so anyway, I'm hoping somebody who's new to rigging is watching this video, and they're going to go, "Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that." So, um, so I got gave you a lot of good tips. Um, and then control Z and bring that back. So that's basically it. And then once you're done weight painting, then you can export out your, your mesh clothing uh, to Second Life and upload to Second Life. So awesome. So that's the video. 
I hope everybody had a great day and what's supposed to be a little five ten minute video turned into a 55 minute video so um, I might edit this so that there's two different versions <laughs> or I might do a really super quick version I don't know all right have a great day thanks bye bye